Welcome to How to Cook That, I'm Ann Reardon and today we're going to be making an incredibly decadent chocolate mousse cake with salted caramel. I actually filmed two versions of this video. This one, which is a normal one with close-up shots of all the food and all of the instructions on how to make everything, and then a face-to-camera version in virtual reality so you can look around and we had some extra surprises in that video for you to look at too, so you can check that one out after. In a bowl, put cornstarch, salt, flour, sugar, and cocoa powder, and then turn on your mixer and mix those together. Once they're combined, pour in the melted butter, and all these recipe quantities are on the howtocookthat.net website for you, and I'll put a link to that below. Continue to mix until you get a crumbly dough that looks like this. This cookie crumb recipe is actually from Christina Tozzi, a pastry chef in New York. We're actually pulling together ideas and bits and pieces from all over the place to make this cake today. Sprinkle them onto a baking tray in chunks and then bake them in the oven for 20 minutes. When you first get them out of the oven, they will be hot of course, but they'll also be quite soft. But if you just leave them, they'll get crisp as they cool. Once they are firm, tip half of them into a bowl of melted chocolate. It doesn't need to be tempered, just melted is fine. Just make sure you stir it around until they're really well coated and you can't see any of the crumb anymore. And then spread that out onto a tray. With the other half of the uncoated crumbs, just place them in an airtight container until we need them. Next, you're gonna to need to make two trays of my rich chocolate cake recipe. And again, that recipe is on the howtocookthat.net website. For the salted caramel, you'll need sugar, glucose or corn syrup, cream, milk, and of course, salt to taste. Add about a quarter of a cup of water to the sugar and the glucose syrup and give it a good stir and heat that up over high heat. Once it's all mixed together, wash down the sides of the pan with a wet pastry brush to get off any of those sugar crystals that might be on the sides of the pan. If you don't get those off, it can cause the caramel to crystallize at the end, so then it will turn into more of like a fudge, which is not what we're after today. Then you can leave that to boil unstirred. At first it will thicken and you'll start to hear those bubbles slow down and then it will start to go golden. Once it's a nice caramel color, Add in the milk a bit at a time, just careful that you don't get any steam on your hands there, and then add in the cream as well. Now at first the caramel will set because the liquid is cold, but just keep stirring and as the milk and cream heat up it will dissolve back into the mixture. Now we need to transfer this into a larger pan so that it doesn't boil over. I'm making a double quantity because I'm making this cake twice, of course, once for this video and once for the VR one. And because VR 180 is so wide, it's 180 degrees, I added a juggler to one side of me and Matthew opening surprises on the other side of me. So it was a lot of fun to make that video. Make sure you watch it. I'll link to that at the end. Add a candy thermometer and let this caramel boil until it comes to about 107 degrees centigrade and this takes quite a while. Once it gets there, just strain it through a sieve to get rid of any little bits that may have caught on the bottom of the pan. Add in your salt and stir that through. Now of course you'll need to resist the urge to taste this because it's hotter than boiling water. So don't dip your finger in, don't taste it, leave it to cool. To make the mousse that goes between the layers, we need milk, glucose syrup, egg yolks, chocolate, cream, gelatin, and water to put the gelatin in. So you just put these sheets in one at a time, and we're just going to leave those to soak so they can soften. Then you wanna add the milk in with the glucose syrup, and we're gonna put that in the microwave until it is boiling. You need to see it bubbling. Whisk the egg yolks and add in a little bit of the hot milk mixture. Whisk it through and then add that back into the rest of the hot milk and stir it around. Now we're gonna put that back in the microwave for about 15 more seconds. That's looking good. Now grab the gelatin sheets out of the water and give them a squeeze to get rid of as much of the liquid as you can. And then just dump that into the hot mixture and stir it around until the gelatin is melted. 
pour that over the chocolate. I'm using half milk and half dark chocolate. And you wanna leave that for a couple of minutes so the chocolate can melt, and then you just stir it around until you have a nice homogenous mixture. Now you wanna leave that to cool to room temperature before we fold in the cream. While that's cooling, level your cakes and use a cake ring to cut two circles from each tray. I'm using an eight inch cake ring for this cake. Then you're gonna need a 10 inch board or a plate that you can put it on and then you'll need your cake ring and then you wanna line that with some acetate that is taller than the height that you want your cake to be. Start of course with a layer of cake, just drop that right down the bottom and check that it's central on the board. Then grab some milk on a bent spoon and put a little drizzle of milk on the cake. This just makes sure that it's super moist when you're eating it. You don't need heaps, about three spoons will be plenty. Once you've done that, add some chocolate crumb and sprinkle that over the top. And the reason why I coated the crumbs in chocolate is so they don't absorb the moisture from the mousse and go soft and soggy. I want them to give a crunch when you're eating this cake. Then drizzle on some of that beautiful salted caramel and let that just ooze over the cake. Thinking is there some on everybody's slice. You don't want it all on one slice. So if it is, just spread it out there a bit. Whip your cream and fold it in with the chocolate mousse mixture that we just made. That should be cooled by now. And keep folding it until it's all mixed together. Then add two and a half cups of that mousse mixture onto the cake. This is my own mousse recipe that I developed for this cake to make sure it was just the right consistency and just the right flavor, nice and chocolatey and not too sweet between the layers of the cake. Continue to layer it up all the way to the top, drizzle on some more of that salted caramel and top with some more mousse to stop the top layer of cake from drying out. This will need to go into the fridge for a few hours at least to set or you could leave it overnight before we decorate it. Chop a chocolate bar into triangular chunks. We're gonna use that for decorating on the top at the end. Now you can just remove that acetate and add some caramel around the top edge of your cake and let some of it just drip down on the sides. Just be quite deliberate about where you want those drips to be. Then pile up some of the cake off cuts into the center. This style of cake is inspired by Andy Bodie, a pastry chef from Sydney. I like the overindulgent look of his cakes. Add some of the crunchy cookie crumb to each side and then spoon on some Italian meringue on top. If you don't know how to make it, I'll link you to a really old video of mine that shows you how to make Italian meringue at the end. Take a blowtorch and gently toast that meringue. You don't want to burn it, you just want it to look a little bit brown, just to fine it a bit. And then add some chunks of whatever chocolate bar you want into that meringue on top. A couple more. And then you can add edible flowers or some cut strawberries for that little pop of colour. With thanks to my patrons and especially my gold patrons whose names are listed here. If you'd like to support this channel too, head on over to patreon.com backslash h2ct or check out the new merch that we have in the shop. Click here to watch the VR video, here for the Italian meringue and here to subscribe. Make it a great week and I'll see you on Friday.